Hey everybody, it's Ryan. I'm standing here at my 30 acre cornfield that is in no-till. Now, I'm out here, I'm going to be looking at the field a little bit because I'm concerned about the yield on this particular field in part because of the wind damage that we suffered about a month ago. With all those storms that we had gotten back in July. So right now I'm trying to find where the flags are because I want to see if right now I can see any difference in plant height or anything like that because if you'll remember those flags marked depth for the seeds when they were planted. So got to sneak through here, got to try to find where the row actually starts going across rather than straight up and down. Here's a crazy ear. This is caused by compaction in the ground. What happens is that the plant gets damaged for whatever reason. The growing, the growing point, which would be right here, gets damaged and then the plant puts out an ear on top where the tassel should be. Which is pretty interesting considering that this one actually looks like it's a usable ear. Now looky here, this is pretty interesting. So these two corn plants actually had green snap. So the plant snapped off at the growing point, which is right there. However, it didn't stop it from producing an ear. It's, it got cut off just above where the ear started. So therefore this corn plant actually produced a usable ear, which is pretty cool. Uh, we actually suffered quite a bit of green snap in this field. Um, a lot of it was done during the storm where we had heard the train dancing around in the sky. A lot of it was during that storm. We came back up here and this is the field that's actually going to be is entered into the yield competition. However, um, judging from the amount of wind damage that we'd received, I'm not too confident on the performance of this field this year. But we will see what happens when the results come in uh, from the yield monitor. But I do find that pretty interesting that it's cut cleanly off right there and yet there's still a usable ear. I'm going to pull this back and see because I want to see how much of a usable ear it actually produced. This plant didn't produce a tassel however with all of the other tassels around it should have done the job of pollinating the plant. This is actually what they do when they are going to produce seed corn they go through and they detassel all of the female plants. So then every other row, or every other few rows, I don't know what kind of pattern they usually do it in, um, will still, will actually produce the ear that they want. So this actually, I mean, this ear doesn't look the most fantastic. You can tell that it's not kerneled all the way down. Uh, would it have if this plant was tasseled out I really don't know but um, I, I find that fascinating so at least there's an ear there here's some more of that green snap out in the field here's what the top should have been on one of these but it snapped off died you can actually see that it pinched on the end there so here's the top that was on this plant Yet still producing ears. It actually has two ears on it. Neither of them are very good. Actually, there's nothing even in that one. But I gotta find those darn flags. Do I think it's going to significantly impact the performance of this field? No. But I am a little concerned about what I could have seen here. Especially for what crop prices are doing. If you haven't checked, um, they are pretty low. However, what did I tell you? I had talked about how early, early, earlier this spring, I mentioned how, you know, the last two years in the summer, it's hit four bucks and then it's gone back down uh, just after it peaks in July. And then during harvest, it reaches the low, which it's done the last two years. But investors like to find patterns. So therefore, um, it got up to like 389 here. 
and it never reached that four dollar mark which like i said this spring i'm like you just watch the last two years have been this way this year won't be it's gonna cut off just short of four bucks and uh, it's gonna screw a lot of people over who are gonna be waiting for that four dollar threshold and it did so i actually just spotted two flags here and uh let's have a look now those of you who remember our emergence video in the spring will remember that the flags that we have planted next to the plants represent the different planting depths. So the shallowest planted seeds are represented by green flags followed by white and blue and then yellow and pink. So I have a green plant right next to a yellow plant here and I'm going to show you the difference in sizes that we have. So. Some people were saying, you know, does it does emergence really even matter? And I have to say that looking at this field demonstration that yes, it does matter. So these two plants that I have are a yellow, which is this one, and a green, which is this one, followed by a white one, which is this one. And I can tell just by looking at these three that the latest planted or the deepest planted plant is the thinnest the shallowest is the thickest because it had the fastest emergence and then it's followed by the white one which is the second thickest still looks pretty good but it's not quite as thick as the one which is right here so when plants are planted shallower they get a head start on their peers and they tend to shadow them out as they get older, which happened in this example right here. So I have quite a few yellow plants over there and I can tell you that they don't really look the best, but <laughs> here's a funny, look at that. Okay, so you can see that there's a blue flag over there. Look how thick the plant that's a blue flag is to the yellow ones that are right next to them. <laughs> um, it doesn't always matter. It kind of depends. The plant's performance kind of depends on the surrounding plants around them. Uh, you know, if the planting depth is deep, it'll, t it'll take them longer to come back up. But then again, if there are more plants that are planted at the same depth, they'll all come up at the same time. And you won't really have too many issues of certain plants being uh, drowned out from the sun by their peers. So this plant came up later. It didn't get a very good head start. Uh, it might've had some other issues going on with it that ki kind of caused it to further not grow very well. However, the one next to it is doing very good. I'm actually gonna peel this one back and try to get a yield estimate on, or at least see how many kernels are in this particular plant. All right, so these flags, are all yellow right in here. So, we could be choosy. That looks like a pretty good one. But it's not really representative of all of the yellow ones, I'd say. So, this actually looks like a pretty good one right here. I'm gonna pull this off. I'm gonna go over back to the truck and I'm gonna get a yield estimate on each of these. I'm gonna take two yellow ones just because I want an average to see. I don't wanna pick one that's really good or really bad. Hear that? When you stand out in like a cornfield for long enough, nature kind of forgets about you before there were like birds and stuff that were landed right on the tops of the corn plants. Now look at this area. This is one of those spots that has quite a bit of green snap. Basically, 10 plants right in a row just chopped right off. This one here is still producing the plant. <laughs> but. So here's one of those areas that has some of that green snap damage. And there's spots like this just all over this field. And that was from one of those storms that came through. 
So I do think that the yield's gonna be reduced by maybe five to 10 bushels in this field at least uh, from what my maximum potential could have been. Um, I should have done some fungicide on this field, but for the rate it was going, I really couldn't afford to put more money into it, uh, especially for the price that crops are at right now. Um, and it just wasn't worth it. So it's kind of some of the decisions that you have to make as a farmer, whether or not, you know, to spread out the fungicide or anything like that. Um, just farming is a lot of management decisions, but I think this field will still make me profit. Um, you know, it's debatable how much, especially with corn price but I just want to let you guys know what kind of the stuff that we're seeing out here and um, some of the issues that are coming up with it I mean you can tell that there's quite a bit of damage in certain spots so there's another one right behind me because it opens up and I can see about 25 feet through the corn so I'm gonna head back to the truck I'm gonna tear these apart and count up how many kernels on are on each of them to try to guess what kind of difference the planting depth made. Rock is just sitting here patiently waiting for me. What's wrong? Huh? So here are my two years that I took from plants that I believe were yellow. And then here's the one from the plant that was white. So I just got done counting the length of the rows. And this one is 35 long, this one's 33, and this one's 28. Now I'm gonna go around and count how many rows around there are, and then we'll have an idea for how much girth each of these has. So I just counted them up, and each of them are 16 around, which was kind of weird. I was figuring that one would be 18. But now if we multiply, we can figure out about how many kernels there are on each of these. So the first one was 35, multiply that by 16. And there are about 560 kernels on this ear of corn that you could expect. And this is the one that was planted shallowest. So it had a head start on the rest of the plants. So the one from the yellow flagged plant that was planted deeper actually isn't much different from the one that was planted shallower. However, this one really isn't a good representative of the yellow plants in the field because I looked around for one of the thicker ones. I want to be like, all right, let's see how like thick we can get these. But uh, this is one of the thicker ears that I grabbed and it feels thicker. Like the kernels are more filled out. I'm going to be perfectly honest. This one feels like it's not quite as filled out yet. And I don't know for what reason that would be, but plants are plants. Um, this one does have more kernels on it, but it feels less thick, even though they're the same width around. So I'm going to multiply 33, which is the large ear from the yellow flagged plants. 33 times, what did I say, 16? So that's 528 kernels on the large eared yellow flagged plant. So not really much of a difference between these two. However, the one thing that really matters is that when you go to sell corn, what really matters is the weight. So I really don't know how much cob there is in there either though. I mean, this looks like it has a thicker cob. That was 528. So we have 560, which was the shallow planted one, 528, which was the deeper planted one. And now I have the average yellow flag looking plant, which is 16 times 28. And that would be 448 kernels per ear. So I'm gonna run a quick yield comparison and see if, you know, if, the entire, if they were all planted at this certain depth, at this yield, what we would get end up with. So I think this field was planted at 32, no, it was planted at 34. So, so in the shallow planted ear of corn, there are 560 kernels of corn. So there are 34,000 plants per acre in this field. At least that's what it was planted at. 
Uh, I can guarantee you it's not that anymore, especially with the seeds that failed to emerge, along with the plants that are damaged and died from other reasons. I'm sure it's much lower than 34,000, but it's what we're gonna use as a base. So I got 560 kernels per ear. If there are 34,000 ears per acre, that's 19 million kernels of corn. If I divide that by 90,000, that's 211 bushels of corn per acre. Uh, and that's just if, you know, everything was exactly that way. I can guarantee you it's probably lower than that, like I said, with the damage in the field. Um, but I would probably say that's my max that I'm looking at because this is one of the healthier ears of corn that I had. And uh, I can guarantee you that a lot of the other ones don't look like that, this out there. So I would say I'm looking at a maximum of 211 bushels per acre. Um, I'm going to peg us somewhere around 185. Uh, just just my own personal guess. We'll see if I'm right when harvest comes around. So I have this other ear of corn here, which is the deeper planted, which is the healthier looking ear. And that was 16 by, what did I say, 32? I think it was 32 that I said. So that's 512 kernels per ear times 34,000 plants per acre. 17 million kernels divided by 90,000. That's 193 bushels per acre if all of the ears look just like this one. And that's all estimated. So now let's look at the average looking ear from the yellow plants, from the yellow flagged plants. And that was 28, I believe, times 16, 448, kernels per year <sighs> multiplied that by 34,000 15 million kernels per acre divided by 90,000 kernels per bushel <coughs> oh, excuse me that's 169 bushels per acre this field was the highest yielding cornfield that we had two years ago. Uh, it was at 205 bushel. Uh, it was a drier year the first year that we had this one, uh, but I believe that with the no-till, uh, it helped kind of retain some of the moisture, which caused it to hide yield, yield higher than the rest of our fields, which many of were chiseled. So I think this one isn't going to be one of our higher yielders this year. Uh, mostly because this field has a higher amount of green snap compared to other fields. So if these plants were planted at a similar depth, we would have seen more similar ears. I mean, that's kind of the goal that we would have with hydraulic downforce on the planter. We would have more regular yields throughout the field rather than seeing these plants that get drowned out by the higher ones because they got a head start on, the, on others. Um, you want to see uniform fields because then you'll have uniform yield. If you have things like this, you know, some plants perform better than others and then it can kind of mess up your yield because not all the plants are receiving a fair amount of sunlight and water. So anyway, uh, I'll continue to monitor this field as we go. Right now it's kind of a toss up for how the yield's gonna go. Um, I see this as being a yield, lower yielding comparative to the rest of the farms, uh, like I said. We've had a lot of rain this year. Uh, if we, it, it's in my own opinion, but I don't think uh, no-till fields perform quite as well as tilled fields do on wet years, um, mostly because of the amount of rain that can get into the soil. With no-till, it's hard for the rain, harder for the rain to penetrate. But um, in drier yields, years, to me, it seems like the no-till fields do better. So. I think Rocket's about ready to go home. I've had to talk, repeat myself how many times because I keep get, messing up. I just, I bit my tongue last night. It's kind of messed me up. I can't, I can't taste anything on the left side of my tongue right now. And uh, if you ever wondered your tongue when you bite it makes a crunch, it was mauled in a very horrific eating accident. <laughs> so, I think Rocket's ready to go home. All right, 
Thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other ones. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, All How Farms Work. Be sure to go to our website if you're interested in any How Farms Work shirts. They are on sale right now because I am doing bulk orders of these shirts. I've already covered that in another video, so I won't cover it again. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys.